Well, this is the scenes in many parts of Sydney underwater. We've seen the most rain in a six-month period on record for parts of the Sydney and Southeast Australia region. And the uh, conditions are expected to continue to be extreme. Thanks for clicking on to the fifth edition of Bogan's Global Weather Report. Uh, there is a lot of extremes going on at the moment globally and I will continue to try to show you exactly what is going on. If I can try and get off this chart then I can, uh, or video should I say, and then I can show you exactly what's going on at the moment. But we have got extreme rainfall affecting parts of Australia. We have also seen record cold temperatures in the tropical north of Australia. The town of Qu uh, Queen Townsville uh, in Queensland uh, recorded a temperature, a high temperature um, of only 12 Celsius, I believe, yesterday or the day before. And that is the coldest July day on record for Townsville in Queensland. This is the um, the two meter temperature anomaly for the, the globe today. And we can see here plenty of warmth uh, across the planet as well. There's no uh, getting away from that. But also there is um, some significant areas of cool to speak about as well. Now there is much of Australia below normal temperature wise, but we've also got a large area of below normal that was originally over Western portions of Russia, now shifting in the central portions of Russia through Kazakhstan and also down into parts of the Middle East as well. And I know Lee, who um, is a uh, Highland weather, uh, you may or may not follow Lee, who is based in uh, Carbridge in the Highlands of Scotland. He is currently on vacation in Dubai. He was also talking about temperatures that were actually slightly below average in that neck of the woods. So um, even in the Middle East, where you would expect temperatures into the high 40s, even up in the door 50, we're seeing temperatures slightly reduced for the time of the year. Of course, across the British Isles, below normal. We're seeing many parts of Canada below normal. Speaking of Canada, we have seen some very interesting things. Um, for Canada Day, for example, we've seen people skiing in the mountains near Banff in British Columbia. And that is the first time we've seen skiing on Canada Day, which I believe is either the final day of, of June or the first day of July. I can't remember which. Either way, it's the first time that folks have skied on Canada Day since 1991. On the other end of the, the, the temperature ledger, however, and by the way, the reason why we've seen skiing all the way to this uh, period of time is thanks to record-breaking uh, snowfall during the winter season and also a pretty cold spring. But, you know, Tokyo, for example, new record for the longest streak of 35 Celsius plus was established a few days ago. So we've seen, you know, uh, what, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, eight consecutive days of 35 Celsius or above. It is the longest heat wave, I believe, in Tokyo history and records go all the way back to the 1800s. So extremes going on around the world at the moment. We've got Lockless Garnock, Northwest Highlands. Yesterday afternoon, we seen a temperature of only 9.5 Celsius. Wind chill of only 6.3 Celsius. So chilly conditions across the British Isles, of course. And, uh, you know, we've got um, record-breaking heat across northern Canada. So a few days ago, we were talking about folks skiing in British Columbia. Up in the far north of Canada, we've seen all-time all -time, record-breaking heat as well. So just... Um, you know, it really is a weird and wacky year of 2020 when it comes to the weather. We're talking about record-breaking temperatures in parts of the world, uh, both in terms of cold as well as, say, uh, as heat. We've got plenty of heat across eastern portions of Europe, as you can see, northern portions of North America, where 
we've seen, of course, all-time records fall. We're starting to warm things up over the United States. It has been fairly chilly, may I add, across many parts of uh, the United States in recent times. And, uh, you know, the global uh, average temperature for today is actually 0.2 Celsius. We're over a half a degree above normal across the Northern Hemisphere. We're below normal in the Southern Hemisphere. We're nearly a full one Celsius above within the Arctic region. And notice Antarctica, it's starting to come up now. We're starting to see that really positive Antarctic oscillation starting to reduce. And as a result, we're starting to see the temperatures coming up. But in turn, that uh, neutralization of temperature over the Antarctic is therefore releasing cold northwards away from the South Pole. And that is why we're seeing cold temperatures across parts of Australia. We're also seeing an increase in rainfall also. Temperatures across the British Isles this morning, fairly chilly for the time of the year. So the 5th of J July, and we're seeing temperatures even down towards the south of England, 7, 8, 9 Celsius. That's a pretty chilly morning, given the fact of the time of the year. So uh, really from the south coast all the way to the north coast, we're seeing single digit temperatures, which is, may I add, fairly chilly. Looking at the current temperatures as of recording, and the time is now quarter past five in the evening. We're talking about 14 Celsius at Wick. We're talking about 18, 17 degrees in the Central Belt. And we're also talking about low 20s in the southeast of England. Another below normal day for the month of July across the British Isles. That being said, we're likely to see a big turnaround coming up towards the end of the week. 27, 28, possibly close to 30 Celsius is possible. High pressure, of course, building in off the Atlantic will start to warm the mid-levels of the atmosphere, draw that down to the surface, and we're going to see the temperatures respond very nicely indeed. A big difference between what we're seeing now versus what we're going to see towards the end of the week. And I'll touch on the following week in a second here. Uh, but before we get there, Looking at the global uh, temperature anomalies here for the, the oceans, very, very warm surrounding Japan. No surprise here, given the heat wave conditions. We've got a belt of very warm water across the North, uh, North Pacific, but we're starting to see a turnaround, a flip between North Pacific and North Atlantic. Very warm North Pacific. We're starting to see a cool down, significant cool down, may I add, across the North Atlantic. Very warm Mediterranean and Baltic Sea, and of course we're seeing plenty of heat coming out of Africa into to the European continent here, and of course the fight continues over the British Isles with regards to Atlantic moving in, heat trying to come out of Africa, and we've got that uh, battleground, so to speak. Notice the, the sharp cooling down the western side of the Indian Ocean, warm across uh, the eastern Indian Ocean, that's representing a pretty negative uh, Indian Ocean dipole. Of course, warm water surrounding Australia means that we're enhancing the rainfall in this region of the world and a good reason why we're seeing um, extreme rainfall across parts of the Sydney area and the southeast Australia. One thing I want to make mention of is the fact that we've got... This is the SSTs for this time back in 2011 and there is a couple of interesting similarities here why am i saying 2011 what what's interesting what's significant about 2011 well if you look at the the solar minimum and the solar cycle overall we're very similar in a state coming off the minimum which occurred 2019 to 2008 2009 where we also seen that last minimum, and it looks as if the solar state at the moment has very similar characteristics to 2011. If you look at the ocean temperatures, there is similarity here as well. Warm North Pacific. If you notice here, we've got this arrow of cold coming away from North America, coming away from South America, meeting in the Central Pacific, 
warming over the equatorial region. So this is 2011, this is 2022. You can see something similar. Warm North Pacific, the arrow, cold coming off North America, cold coming off South America, the meat in the middle, warming in between, so to speak. We've also got some cold water over the North Atlantic. We've got warm water over the North Pacific. You can see here the similarity taking place. The one big difference is the, in, the Indian Ocean. We've got almost the opposite. We're seeing cold water surrounding Australia, Indonesia, warm waters on the African coast. If you look at that, you can see here cold water in the opposite position. So there is differences. There is a lot more warmth in the northern ocean basins. And I believe here, folks, that is what's driving a warmer global temperature overall. Of course, if you look at the lower tropospheric temperature, there is a big, big difference between the period between 2008 and 2012. We went below normal. You have to go all the way back to that period for the last time the atmosphere and indeed the surface temperature was below normal. This time around, the plateau, the benchmark is much, much warmer than that. So the, the Earth's atmosphere has warmed significantly in the last decade or so. And the reason I believe is because we've got a warmer ocean overall. But it's interesting the similarities taking place with the, the solar cycle and indeed the ocean temperature profile uh, as well here. So, you know, this is just remarkable days that we're living in. Maybe it's scary days. I don't know. You know, there's people there that are saying that we're in the end times and that's a whole de other debate for another time. But certainly there is a lot of things going on at the moment when it comes to Earth and its temperatures and its extremes as well. I'm just trying to give you more examples of uh, of the extremes that we're seeing at the moment here uh, taking place globally here. Oh, this is an interesting one here, by the way. Uh, Tayside and Fife Weather released this tweet, and you can see here the drought situation across the fire danger. Sorry. So we've got... Of course, very dry conditions, as you would expect to see within the Mediterranean Basin during this time of the year. But the extremity of the fire danger, fire threat, is extreme within uh, the countries surrounding the Mediterranean Basin at the moment. But we also have a, a, an increase in fire threat in parts of southeast England, extending all the way up into eastern England, even eastern Scotland, which represents how dry it's been. And of course, the period that we're looking at, 2010, 2011, 2012, the early part of 2012, may I add, we had very dry conditions uh, across the British Isles. The reason why is we had a multi-year La Nina, and we're seeing the same thing taking place again. So it's interesting how the atmosphere and the oceans work together and almost kind of repeat itself. It, it just fascinates me how the weather and climate works overall. And um, I'm going to try and continue to show you a few uh, interesting things before the end of this video. And uh, you know, look at this here. We've got a, a record-breaking cold temperature here on uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but the record maximum low uh, temperature yesterday, 3.6 Celsius. And, uh, you know, that was recorded in Nunavik. Um, so record breaking heat, record breaking cold uh, in northern portions of Canada. And, of course, we had the snowfall situation in parts of uh, British Columbia as well. So just amazing stuff. Very extreme uh, as well. Looking at the 850 millibar temperatures here, cool across the eastern half of the British Isles. We're going to see uh, the 850s warm up over the next few days. But notice the glance and blows coming in around the top of that area of high pressure. And then as we push towards the middle portion of the month, there's the warm 850s coming up 20, 25 Celsius into the southeast of England. And they're representing some extreme.